I hope this will only take a few minutes. So I'm going to try and show how to make a box plot, or sorry, a QQ plot, a normal probability plot easily in R. And I'll do first with base R, and then I'll show how to do it using R Commander, which is a little bit more pointing and clicking. So let me screen share here. Um, yeah. Let's do this. I'll do this. Okay, so here's a screen. Um, I'm going to start R. Actually, this is a terrible idea. Let me unscreen share this. Let me try this a different way. Bear with me for one moment. All right, there we go. So now I'll try this again. So I'm going to share my screen here, and you can see what's going on. So I'm going to start R here. I don't know. I have R just as this icon down here on my taskbar. You might have it somewhere else. You might have it in your programs. Um, I have a 64-bit computer, so I'll try 64, but either one will work. So I've got R there. So I've got that going on. But before I do anything with that, I need to make sure that I actually have the data. So let me look in my documents. And I created a little folder earlier. I created a little folder earlier called Team Paper Chapter 3 for my Psychology 200 students here at uh, SUNY Fredonia. And I put some files in here, including the data set in CSV format. Now, CSV stands for Comma Separated Values. It's kind of an Excel type thing, but it's stripped down and very simplified. So I'm going to need that. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that over here. And I'm going to put R here on you know, a little webcam thing. Anything embarrassing showing? I hope not. So here's, um, here's R. R is just a console. It's nothing really interesting unless you know what you're doing with it. So I'm going to show how to get some data into R, which is our first step. We have to get this BP2004 CSV, the best places study data, into R. So there's a command to do that. Uh, in base R, everything is with typing. Oh, there's very little with pointing and clicking. So that's weird for some people. But the command is called read CSV, read.csv. Everything in R is case sensitive. And this command, everything is in lowercase. So I could do just read CSV, but I actually want not only to read the data. Now, R is like a child who you have to say everything exactly right, because it's only going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So it would read the data, but it wouldn't keep it around for you to use if you just used read CSV. So you have to say read CSV, and then you have to assign that, the results of that, the data you, result, you read. You have to put it into an object of making my data sets capital letters, my data set objects. Then I'm going to use the assignment operator, which looks like an arrow. It's less than dash. So what this means is I'm going to do stuff, and I'm going to put it into this BP object. Whatever I do is going to be put into this BP object. The BP object doesn't exist yet. It's going to be a thing that gets created within R right now. So the thing that gets created will be created by read CSV, read.csv. Now, within these parentheses, usually I would type something like C, uh, my documents, blah, 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 blah. But that's kind of a pain. So I'm going to use an extra little function inside there that will let a little pop-up dialog happen so that I can go and find this file over here. So I'm going to type file.choose. And now commands always have to have these parentheses after them where you put arguments. Oops, sorry. And arguments are like the things that the command does things to. So read CSV, the argument is file choose. But file.choose doesn't have any arguments. It just has empty exclamation points. Anyway, just type this exactly like this. Close all your parentheses. I hit Enter. And now I have a dialog box. So I'm going to look at my documents here. I'm going to look down here at Team Paper Chapter 3. So that file choose means let me just choose the file using my mouse and a picture. And I'm going to click Open. Nothing happens. And this is another thing about R. Um, not, you don't often get displays of things happening unless you ask for the displays in certain ways. But something did happen. Now, if I use the list command, list all the objects, ls, open close parentheses, it'll list all my objects. I have one. 
called BP. So something did happen. BP was created, and there it is. Now if I just type BP, it'll show me BP, and there it is. It showed me BP, but not in a very useful way. Uh, if I want to see it more easily, I can choose, I can type like edit, I'm oh, sorry, edit BP. There we go. And now I've got this in a nice uh, matrix that's similar to like an SPSS or PSPP matrix or Stata or Excel or something like that. Now I can't do anything with R until I close this window. That's another odd thing about R. There are easier ways to work with things. Um, but in R, people don't often look at their data matrices, which is very strange to me. So I'm going to do list again, just so I can see this. Now I can see the names of the variables that got imported by doing names BP, names of BP. There we go. There are the names. So let's say I want to look at this variable here, cloudy. And let's say I want to uh, create a QQ plot, a normal probability plot for this. Cloudy is... Um, what is it, number of cloudy days or percent of the time cloudy? We could look over here in this code book, then it would tell us. But I can get an idea by just typing the name of it. Now, if I type cloudy, nothing happens because it's not an object, it's a variable within another object. So you have to type the name of the data set that holds it, BP, and then a dollar sign. So in this data set, I want this variable, cloudy. Now, this will just show me the values. There we go. So it's just numbers, so I think it's the number of cloudy days that these cities have. Anyway, I'll look at the code book later to make sure. But anyway, it's just numbers. So if I just do that, it shows me the values. And that's how we see anything in R. You just type its name. It's like magic. If you, if you know its name, you own it. Um, I read too many fantasy novels in high school. It's not my fault. So we want to do qqplot. And there's a function called qqnorm norm. So if I put this BP dollar sign cloudy inside QQ norm, that'll create a QQ plot. So BP dollar sign cloudy. There we go. It popped up a new window. Now you might have one big, depending on how you installed R, you might have one big window behind you with um, uh, this whole thing might be one window and these little things pop up within that window. That's the MDI interface or something that you chose on installing. That's the default. I chose SDI that makes separate windows. I like it better. It's the same thing, though. So there's my QQ plot. Now I can save this plot in a variety of ways. I could, for instance, save it as a, a PNG file, which is a standard, or a JPEG file. So I like PNGs. They're really good for charts. And I can go find this folder down here, Team Paper Chapter 3, and I can say cloudy, oops, cloudy.qqplot.png. There we go. Now I have this PNG plot saved there. There it is. I could also paste it into a Word document. So for instance, I can right click and create a new Word document here. Um, my paper. I can open this Word document and I'll put it over here. And then I can save this. I can do file, copy to the clipboard. Now I could do bitmap and I can paste that here. And that's okay. I just paste a picture in there. And that's fine, you can do that. But if you want extra crispness within Windows, remember that Metafile is a Windows and Microsoft thing. So if I choose copy to the clipboard as a meta file, nothing happens, but it's in the clipboard. And now I do control V, and then it's extra crisp and clear when it's copied. So now I have this in my Word document. And I can maybe go down here and say, that is my graph. And then save this and send it to Dr. Rogers or something. Anyway, so I'll look at that a little bit later. Now let's see what happens if I were to do this with R Commander. Now, the R Commander, um, to install it, first you have to install the R Commander package. Let me zip this up a little so you can see it. So I would say install packages, which is what you have to do. And then in quotation marks, capital R, lowercase cmdr. And then I would say, oops, lowercase, dependencies equals true. And the true is all in capital letters. And that will install 
So I'll go down here. Now, I've already installed this, so it might give me an error. It asks you to choose a computer, an internet server to install it from. Choose a mirror, I don't know, PA2. And so it'll try and do this installation. It might tell me you've already got our commander, what is wrong with you? No, it's downloading everything. Handy. So when you install new packages in R, you're getting new functions and new new things like this. Um, now I'm going to do library R commander to start it. So it's installed, but it's not loaded into R and ready to use right now. So I'm going to say library, and now without quotation marks, R CMDR. You don't need the quotation marks here. And now this starts the R commander. Now, if you do this the first time, you'll probably get a window in between this after you type library that says, do you want to install such and such package? Just click OK. Choose the defaults. OK. Use the Cran mirror. OK. So now, when we use our commander, this is pretty much, this is, this is our window. This is what we're going to use. Our commander is a pointing and clicking system that you can use with R. So with our commander, if I'm going to do a QQ plot this way, well, I still have to get the data in. But this time, I don't use read.csv. I use some pointing and clicking. So I go to data, yeah, interestingly enough, and I choose import data. Now I want to import it from a, a, a CSV file, which is a text file. So from text file clipboard URL. Now I want to call this, I'll call it BP2. So it's different from the other BP. I'll give it a name that I can remember. And are the variable names in file? Yes, they are. Missing data indicator NA. So what is in the file to show missing data? Well, I don't think there are any NAs in this file. I would delete it. So just blank is the missing data. But I don't think it matters because I don't think this particular file has any missing data. Location of the data file is in a local file system. So it's right here on my hard drive. So it's local. Field separator. This is where I need to change something. This is a CSV. It stands for comma separated value. So when it tries to say, what's the difference between one number and the next, is it some white space, like a space or a blank? No, it's, it's a comma. And then I leave this as period, because only Europeans use commas and some other places in the world. In the United States, we use periods as a decimal point. Some other places use commas, especially Europe. Okay. And it says, where do you want to find it from? So once again, I go find this file, Team Paper Chapter 3. I choose BP. CSV, and now I see some stuff appear here, and this is the stuff that our commander put into R itself. So our commander is like a helper that stands between you and the R window, the R console, and it knows all the things to type. So this is what it typed in to make this happen. It got a little bit fancy there. It said read.table instead of read.csv, and but it's pretty similar to what we did before. Now before I use the data set, I have to select it in R commander. So data active data set, select active data set. Now it has two in there. It might, yours might is in R, and you saw me create this BP data set just using base R, just with the typing. Um, so I, just, I get to choose. They're actually identical, but I'll choose this one, BP2. So now that I've selected it, now I can just make graphs. So if I want to do a QQ plot, I do this, graphs quantile comparison chart. And it just gives me a window to choose the variables. So I choose cloudy. Now I could do options, but no, let's just not. So let's, these options are a little confusing. They're for more advanced things. So I choose that and I click OK. There we go. It's a little bit more fancy than the other one. It has the diagonal line for comparison and it has the 95% confidence interval dashed lines. So we can see that cloudy is not as uh, normal as it should be. It's a little leptocurtic, it looks like, a little too pointy in the middle. So you can do that. Now, if I wanted to see a different kind of chart, I could do graphs and I could do, say, a box plot. And once again, I could choose cloudy. Now, there are some different options you can choose. Um, you can put labels for your graphs if you want. You can plot it by different groups, but I don't have any groups to plot by. I just want a simple box plot. OK, there's my box plot. Now, it gives me numbers because it puts the numbers of the outliers. The outliers are every, anything beyond 1.5 interquartile range, 1.5 IQR away from, uh, away from here, I think, away from the median. Is that what it is? Anyway, or away from Q3 and Q1. I believe that's it. It's 1.5 IQR away from these, perhaps. Anyway, 
the numbers kind of overlap on each other, but you could, yeah, there's a bunch of outliers there. That's a good way to look at outliers. Now, once again, I can save this file. I can do file save as PNG bitmap, or I can copy it to the clipboard as a meta file once again, and I can look in my Microsoft Word document. I can say, here's my box plot. And I can just uh, paste. There we go. And there's my box plot in Microsoft Word. So I think we're all done. That's the end. Let me see if I can figure out how to stop this thing.